Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3. Today we've got King Kong vs. Godzilla, one of my favorite movies from my childhood that I gotta talk about. This movie is the first of the two iterations in the long history of King Kong and Godzilla. It is a movie I hold dear and dear to my heart when I think about, and it's one of those movies I think everybody can find a way to enjoy, even if you're not a Godzilla kaiju fan. Before we go any further, please be sure to go ahead and like and subscribe, and get hit the notification bell to stay up to date because we have a lot of news to talk about. One of the key aspects for this movie was the sheer fact that it was the first Godzilla movie that was in color, and just not Godzilla, but King Kong as well. This is a big deal, even look at promotional art for this movie, because they go ahead and flex hard that it is now in color. They have every right to flex that hard, because so far, three movies in, both of them three movies in, they have come so far, and it's now time to bring them together and just rumble and go at it. So let's do a recap, shall we? First we had Godzilla 1954, which had a dark political message, and it went ahead to set the tone for the entire franchise from there. But we had to go ahead and up things up a notch, and we had Godzilla Raids again, which brought together two different monsters, Godzilla and Anguirus. This is the first time we've seen it on screen, however though, the movie was not as successful as some of the later movies though. So we gotta take it up a notch. Who do we bring in? We call in the big guns. We call in King Kong, and we have him go against Godzilla. One of the interesting things too about this movie is the sheer fact that Godzilla takes second billing. Now it's not often this happens, but at the time, he was less popular, and because of the fact he was the villain, you kind of had to give him second billing. And it's just kind of weird to think about because it's no question nowadays, Godzilla is obviously a bit more popular. I could get butchered by some of the King Kong fans, but we're talking about a monster with 30 movies, 30 plus movies I should say. King Kong maybe has about 12 to 15 within that range of uh, maybe one cartoon series, so a lot has changed since 62 for these two. It's a simple, fun movie. It doesn't take itself too serious. The tone is kind of a little less serious in this movie, but it has fun along the way. That's the cool thing about this movie, and the fight scenes are done much better. And that's one thing I applaud about, because at this point, they were getting the formula down. They were figuring it out, Toho, and they were only moving forward. And I think the show era has some of the best fight scenes, because whether you're laughing or just in awe by what you're seeing, it's something that you are 100% enjoying. You don't feel like you gotta force yourself through certain scenes. And this movie is definitely not one I gotta force myself through. One thing I do admire about this movie is the sheer fact this movie doesn't think too hard when it comes to the plot point. It doesn't insert a lot of crazy things in, like, say, like, the Hollow Earth, or Kong's trying to go home, or Godzilla's going erratic and they're trying to find out why. It basically just takes everything we knew before about the monsters and just insert in this movie and go forward. That's all it does. It's a fairly simple movie. We know Godzilla terrorizes people. He was found in ice, and he was buried in the last movie. He stomps a town, he's uncontrollable, he's a menace. And then you got King Kong. King Kong, you know, he's worshipped by native islanders. He will take a pretty girl and scale up a building with her and hold her. Yeah, that is something that even flexed real hard in the trailer for this movie. Just take a listen. See King Kong stamp Tokyo into the ground, holding a beautiful girl in his grasp. You're damn right, that's why I paid admission to see this movie. I wanted to see this giant ape pull the pretty lady and go up one of the tallest buildings he could. See Godzilla destroy an entire army. And hell yeah, I want to see Godzilla destroy the military. That's another reason why I'm watching this movie. It's all there. They knew their demographic. They knew the audience they were targeting with this movie, and they made sure to gun after it. It can definitely be a goofy movie, and it doesn't even stop with the kaiju in this movie, because even the human characters in the two are just something that you kind of like snicker, kind of giggle over certain scenes. Even if you're seeing outlandish things, like some type of like string or wire that is indestructible that is created, and they can use it to carry King Kong in the battle, like, what? You know, I shouldn't be liking this as much as I do, but I do! That's the thing right there, this movie just has fun. And I think I like it when things don't take themselves too serious at points. Another thing that needs to be mentioned too is if you've never watched this movie with friends, or this is their first time watching it, whether they're a kaiju fan or not, do not tell them about what's going to happen, because you want to see their reaction. Pay attention to them, film it if you must, but most importantly, just make sure you look at them and see how they react to certain scenes, like the kangaroo kick scene, or the tree scene. I love seeing people's reactions, I love seeing people happy and actually enjoying themselves. It's amazing. And I love the fact that they make sure that this is basically like the first time that these species have ever met, really. The first time they're going head to head, as opposed to the other movie where they have a long historic uh, war between the two sides of the species. Uh, that's one thing I didn't really like about the movie, but hey, we'll talk about that movie later. This movie, on the other hand, though, it just makes sure the Godzilla, the King Kong, the last of their kind, are battling it out. One thing that's great about this movie, it does the battle scenes so much better, like justice is actually done. 
In Godzilla Raids again, they didn't exactly know what they were doing. They were trying to figure things out, but this time around, they got the formula down. They were starting to figure out how to approach this so it would be enjoyable for the audience. And so it didn't feel like a drag in this kind of, uh, you know, where they had to basically do these slow fight scenes and then after that in the post-production phase, you know, kind of speed it up so it looked like it was actually being fast-paced. This movie, and they figured it out, and it's only going to take the series to new high levels from here on out. And of course, it does appear to be a little random at certain scenes, such as King Kong using electricity with no real explanation in the movie other than the fact that, oh, electricity helps King Kong, but you know, you watch it as a viewer and you kind of roll with it. But if you look up anything behind the scenes, you'll find out there's more to this and why basically King Kong has the electric powers. So basically what it boils down to is you had John Beck, who took the original story from Willis O'Brien, which would have pitted King Kong versus Frankenstein. Yes, you heard that correct, a kaiju version of Frankenstein. The idea was never sold to anyone. So, Toho, of course, sold it off and made the magic happen. Frankenstein was dropped from the movie and Godzilla was added in as the second monster. Kong just took Frankenstein's spot in the script. That's the legit story. No real reason why in the movie why King Kong has powered by electricity. He just is. So I really love the fact that that's, that's literally it. You know, when you learn about the history, that basically they said, hey, all those spots with Frankenstein, fill it in with King Kong. And then after that, the rest of it that's empty, just put Godzilla in there. Let's film a movie and just have him duke it out. I'm telling you, this is one for the history books. Definitely one for the history books. The first actual fight scene in the movie kind of feels like a tease, and it's one of those one things that's like, ah, King Kong, what are you doing? Get back in there and fight. We're ready for this. This is what we paid to see. But eventually, it all pays off near the end, because later we get to see King Kong just go ham on Godzilla. We see Godzilla just wreck King Kong at points. In the big epic battle, there's a fire, they're rolling around. You see everything that you wanted to see in this movie, and it definitely is a movie that brings me joy. So one reason this movie is really special to me is because of how salty this movie used to make me. I kid you not, back in the day when I was a kid, I hated the fact that King Kong actually won. Because you see King Kong surface. You don't really know what happens to Godzilla, other than the fact that he just swims away like a coward. But you know what, as a kid, that bummed me out because Godzilla, my hero, he did not take second place ever. In this movie, he took an L for the first time. But of course, you know, they had to go ahead and do it because King Kong was the good guy and the good guy has always won. During this period of movies, at least for, to my knowledge, it was just more common, obviously. It wasn't like, say, like nowadays where you see like Thanos-type ending where he snaps his finger and then if that, that's it. The bad guy wins and, of course, you know, they make a sequel and then the good guys get their way. But, yeah, Godzilla loses, basically, in this movie, and that makes me salty. I even remember going as far as a kid also doing something else. I remember I pretended that my Kevin Nash or my Scott Hall figure is usually one of them two. I would pretend that it was a King Kong figure because I didn't have a King Kong action figure. I had tons of Godzillas, but basically I'd have my Kevin Nash fight Godzilla and Godzilla would come out as the winner. That just made things better, you know. It made up for the fact that I saw Godzilla get beaten and dethroned as the king of the monsters in this movie. So, I'm sorry Kevin Nash, but Godzilla had to take his anger out on somebody. That's how it happened. Also, don't ask me why Kevin Nash and Scott Hall had to be my options. I guess just because I had a bunch of WWE or WCW figures back in the day, and I figured they would be the best suited for whatever reason. But you know, the imagination of a child. This movie just takes me back to a simple, more innocent time. You know, before, you know, you're growing up and you're having to pay bills and do the things that adults do. This movie, though, it was just simple. You know, during the summertime, watching those movies on Sci-Fi Channel. Sci-Fi Channel was always a wit to anybody that grew up in the 90s or the 80s. They definitely had all kinds of specials, all kinds of movie marathons of some great things going on. While Kong and Godzilla have their differences, anytime they ever meet on screen, it is noted that King Kong is the reason and part of the reason that Godzilla's popularity sparked big time. In the show era, one thing I do want to note is I think this is where some of the best battles come from. Like, I don't feel like it gets any better. Like, yes, the Hayside and Millennium era have their fun, but I feel like, in my opinion, and I can't speak for everybody, but the show era is one of those ones I have so much fun watching Godzilla do some wild things, and you're only going to see more wild things as this series progresses. So here's the thing, you go ahead and give this movie a watch. If for some reason you've never seen the 62 version, go ahead and watch it, see if you enjoy it. If it does nothing for you, then hey, guess what? You know, you're your own critic, I will not tell you people how to think when it comes to movies. Um, it's one of those movies that, yeah, it is older, but I have a firm enjoyment for it, though.